Hey guys, I got a lot of questions in my video yesterday asking about my setup, how I disabled the nav bar and how I enabled Pi controls on Android Lollipop. Now I'm not using a custom ROM, I'm actually using the stock factory image from Google. The only difference is I am rooted and you will need to be rooted to follow the steps in this video so just be aware of that. Now first off, the nav bar being disabled. I'm actually going to talk about this a little bit later on in the video and the reason for that is once you disable this nav bar, there's nothing that actually turns on automatically for you to control your device. So if you haven't set an application up beforehand, you'll have no control over your device. It won't have a home, back or recents key and you'll be pretty much stuck. So the first thing you want to do is actually have an application that can control your phone. I'm using Pi controls here, but of course you can use other things like GMG gesture controls or any gesture based application that's completely up to you I love the way Pi works it's very customizable very quick not quite as quick as the soft keys but it's still pretty quick and quicker than gestures I find now for these Pi controls I'm using the LMT launcher you can get this application for free from XDA it's not available in the Play Store so the links are included in the description you can go ahead and download that and it says LMT launcher, it's not actually a launcher, it doesn't replace your Nova launcher or your Google Now launcher, you can see I'm still using Nova behind. It actually sits on top of that and it goes on top of every application so you can control uh, you know, each application using Pi. So it works fantastically and of course disabling it that nav bar you do get a little bit more screen real estate for your applications which looks great on the Nexus 5. So once you've installed LMT Launcher, open it up and be sure to grant it root permissions when it asks for it. Then you need to activate the service and don't forget to also turn on auto start service. That's very important so that when your phone restarts or when you reboot it, the service will automatically start and you should have Pi controls within about 15 to 20 seconds after it boots. Pi here has so many different options. There are a ton of different options for you to mess around with. You can change the activation area. I've got mine set to the bottom just here, as you can see, but you can have it on the right, the left, the left and right. There's all the different permutations you can have are right there. You can change the area thickness. This is for the activation area. You can see I've got mine set to 30. You'll see the little black activation area at the bottom there. You can make it smaller, you can make it longer. That just depends on your usage, so you'll have to use it and see if it interferes with how you use your applications and go back into LMT and change it up a bit. For the color options, you can change pretty much everything, including the normal color, which I have set to blue, selected color, icon color, outline color, and gradient. The amount of options for this version of Pi is pretty insane. The size is also changeable as well. I have my inner radius set to 80 and my outer radius set to 85. Again, that's just personal preference. You might like it a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, and one thing that's normally on by default is the show info setting. And if we turn this on, you can see what it looks like. It's cool. You can see it gives you the time. It gives you the battery info, CPU info and Wi-Fi state. But I didn't really need it, so I turned it off and I find it quicker with it off as well. Now to actually change the buttons that are displayed on Pi, like I have here, my normal back home and recents, head over to the Pi tab at the top. You can pretty much have a button for nearly anything on your device, including apps or device functions like Wi-Fi. There are a ton of different ones to choose from. You can also actually have different layers of the Pi as well. So if you wanted another tier with favorite apps, you could do that as well. It'll just be on top but I just have the pretty much standard. Now, one thing I have set is a long press for the menu key on the home button. You can see after I leave it, my finger on there for a while, it changes to a menu button. The reason for that is when you go into Chrome, and this is the only application I've actually found this issue on, I can't see the, the uh, three dot menu. I can't see that overflow menu to actually press the options button. So I have to use Pi here, press and hold, and the menu button will appear in the center of the screen. So it's a workaround, but it's really no issue for me. I don't really use the menu button too much, but when I do, it's an option there for Pi. The next thing is to disable the nav bar. So there are loads of applications that can do this in the Play Store, of course. Some of them are paid, some of them only enable immersive mode. I wanted to disable it completely so that when I pull up from here, it's only Pi that shows up and not my nav bar. To do that, I've actually just done a build prop tweak. So if we go into a file explorer here, I'm using ES File Explorer. You can use any file explorer that will enable you to edit the system partition. So it will need to have root privileges. And in root file explorer, you'll see it's a, uh, sorry, in ES file explorer, you can turn it on by going into the side menu. If you tap on root explorer again, it's gonna give you the option to mount the storage as read writable. You only really need the system mounted as read writable for this tweak though. And then head over to system and then build prop. Make sure you make a backup of your build prop, send it over to your computer. If you do get in a boot loop, you can ADB the build prop back and everything will be fine. So just make sure you do that. Open this up in an editor 
and scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll need to add this line right here. You won't have this line if you have the soft keys on most likely. So just add the qemu.hw.mainkeys equals one. Has to be that exact line, no other spaces at the end or at the beginning. Once you've done that, hit save and then reboot your device. And when you come back on, you're not going to have a nav bar here and you're just going to have to wait a few seconds for Pi to activate and then you'll have basically the setup I have right here. I'd suggest the first time you do this putting LMT launcher on your home screen so that when you reboot your device if for some reason it doesn't start the service you can manually start it but I haven't had any issues with that. So yeah there you go guys I hope you enjoyed it. Peace out.